Welcome to another math help lesson. This is Mr. Pi. We're going to be taking a look at lesson 2.6, Experimental Probability from the Prentice Hall edition, Algebra 1 edition, copyright 2009. Let's get into it. Experimental probability is based on data collection. Therefore, the whole mindset compared to theoretical probability, what is supposed to happen um, versus experimental probability, what actually is happening in real life. Uh, experimental probability is really useful in uh, the manufacturing of products. We'll see that in our examples. We have the probability of the event, which is the going to be the percent of what happens and the number of times the event occurs. Um, thinking about manufacturing, how many items are good or bad in a particular experiment or uh, event. The number of times the experiment is done is how many samples they have, how many pieces they actually test. And we're going to see how that works out in the coming examples. Example 14, finding experimental probability. Key thing is here is that we are finding experimental probability. Quality control inspects 500 belts at random. They find no defects in 485 belts. What is the probability that a belt selected at random will pass quality control? We have that little equation from the previous slide. The probability of the event is what we need to find. And we need to define the event. That ev event is defined right here. What is the probability that a belt selected at random will pass quality control? So we want to know if a belt will pass quality control. I'm going to shorten it down to pass quality when I write it into my equation. So that would be the probability that a belt passes quality control. And that's going to be equal to the number of times the event occurs. The event being passing quality control, it says right here, they found no defects in 485 belts. So that's going to be the number of times the event occurs. The event being passing quality control. So if it has no defects, it passes quality control. The next part of it is finding the number of times the experiment is done. Quality control inspected 500 belts. Since they inspected 500 belts, that is the number of times the experiment is done. So the probability that a belt will pass quality control is 485 out of 500. Well, that's kind of meaningless. Uh, we want to break it. It's not meaningless, but it has more meaning if we can uh, simplify that fraction divide by dividing out the greatest common factor of 5. That gives us 97 over 100, which we all know is 97%. So the probability that a belt is going to pass quality control is 97 percent. Let's take a look at another example here. Remember, we're finding the experimental probability. The manufacturer inspects, inspects 2,500 skateboards. There are 2,450 skateboards with no defects. Find the probability that a skateboard selected at random has no defects. So again, we're going to start with the probability of the event. Probability of the event is in the last sentence here. Find the probability that a skateboard selected at random has no defects. So we're going to shorten that down to has no defects. So the probability of no defects. So we need to continue, and we need to identify the number of times the event occurred, the event being no defects. There are 2,450 skateboards with no defects. So this sentence says right here that there are 2,450 skateboards with no defects. So that will be our numerator. And the last number we need to figure out is the 2,500. 
And since that sentence reads, the manufacturer inspects 2,500, that is how many times the experiment has been done. Simplifying this fraction by its greatest common factor of 50, gives us 49 over 50. Now that fraction, just almost all of them, 49 out of 50, and if we change that to a percent, we divide 49 by 50, then multiply by 100, that'll give us 98 percent. We could also uh, write this by multiplying it actually by 2, and that would give us the 98 over 100. So the probability of no defects is equal to 98 percent. Remember, in these two examples, we were finding the experimental probability. We were finding it. We were asked to find the probability, the number on the left of the equal sign in our equation. Moving on to example 5T, we move away from finding the experimental probability to using the experimental probability, meaning we're going to be given or have to calculate the experimental probability first. In example 5T, the same belt manufacturer in example 4T has 12,000 belts in the warehouse. Predict how many belts are bad. Well, and from example 4, we were told, or we actually calculated, that 97% of the belts were good. So what we need to do is we need to calculate how many belts are bad, because this example is asking for how many belts are bad. That's a pretty simple calculation. 100% is the total, minus 97%. That would give us 3% of the belts being bad. So this is the percent we're going to use for this here, the probability of the event. We're given that probability, and that's 0 0.03 as a decimal, dividing that by 100 or moving the decimal two times to the left. So we have to identify what we need to find and what we are given. And in this problem, we're given that there are 12,000 belts in the warehouse. So that's our sample space. That's the number of times the experiment would be done. And X is going to be the and I guess we should define x. We should let x equal the number of bad belts. So when we solve this equation, we solve it by multiplying each side by 12,000. The reason we do that, the variable is being divided by 12,000. The opposite of division is multiplication. This blue that I'm writing now would be my work, if you will. And when I multiply 0 0.03 by 12,000, either by hand or with a calculator, we end up with 360. So x is equal to 360, so there are 360 bad belts. And there would be the answer there. Moving on to example 5S, working with using experimental probability. When we read this problem, the manufacturer inspects 700 light bulbs. She finds that the probability that a light bulb works is 99.6%. There are 35,400 light bulbs in the warehouse. Predict how many light bulbs are likely to work. So the probability uh, of the event is given. The probability of the event is 96%, and that probability is that a light bulb works. So the probability that a light bulb works is 99.6%. Uh, so that's the probability of the event in this case. So when we substitute it into the equation, 
that gives us 0.996. And that's equal to the number of times the event occurs. And again, that's what we're trying to find in these problems. So let's define our variable before we go any further. Let x equal the number of light bulbs worked. I know that's kind of a long definition of a variable, but let x be the number of light bulbs that should work. So, since that's what we're solving for, x, that's our numerator, how many times the event occurs, and the number of times the experiment is conducted, or how many lights we're testing, is how many are in the warehouse, which would be 35,400. Solving this equation is similar to the last equation. We multiply both sides by 35,400. These will cancel. Multiply the other side by 35,400. And that will give us x being equal to 35,258. We'll put bulb should work. That should work. So in the two examples 5, 5T, and 5S, we were using experimental probability to predict how many uh, items in a warehouse would be either defective or um, would pass quality control. Experimental probability is really big in the areas of uh, production. This has been Mr. Pye. I hope you enjoyed this lesson.